Howdy HSM, I'm down here in the yellow line. Yes, it still does exist. We miss you in it, but I'm excited to have an opportunity to still share with you. Our plans have shifted and completely changed. And I'm curious, how do you respond when plans have to change? On our iPhones, we have a couple of those apps, you know, that give us clarity on how to get certain places, ways, Google Maps, Apple Maps, you know, the way that God actually intended for us to get to places because it's an Apple phone, probably should use Apple Maps. I don't know, that's just me, that's just me. But all these things exist to make sure that we get to our destinations. And yet somehow I'm out here still getting lost. Um, it's probably because I have the Siri voice turned off. I don't really like people telling me what to do. It's my thing, me and God are working through it, it's fine. But <laughs> the moment that I get lost, something has to change and something happens on that phone. It tells me, oh, don't worry, Courtney, we're recalculating. You ever heard this word recalculating? Probably, right? You know what it means? I'm going to give you this really scholarly definition. Get ready for it. Recalculating. It means to calculate again. Mind-blowing, right? Calculating again, typically using different information. When plans change, when things have to be recalculated, when patterns have to shift, typically we think about it in a negative sense. I made the wrong turn, I missed my exit, new things have happened, I have to switch it up, There's no, this is a lost cause, we're never gonna make it. Says who? The social distancing restrictions have completely shifted our, our patterns in our lives. It's probably messed up a lot of your plans, it's messed up a lot of minds as well. And <laughs> you have to recalculate what your life looks like. You have to recalculate what your life looks like. I wonder, you know, now that you have all this free time, what are you doing with it? What are you filling it with? You're ignoring online school altogether? Good luck with that. <laughs> Is this your time to become TikTok famous? I support you, for sure. You think, now is my moment to DM that guy or DM that girl. I promise you, it's not. You're just bored. Let it go. Don't do it. A lot of us are filling that same time with fear and anxiety and frustration and annoyance and anger because your pattern has been shifted. You have to recalculate the nature of how you live your life. And I wonder, is it actually that negative? Because another question that we should begin considering is, what does God actually want to do with this time? This is a unique time. Is God looking to do something different with you in it? What is he seeking to show you about himself and what plans need to be recalculated in the midst of this time, the destination to be with him, to connect with him, to grow with him? It's still the same. The destination is still the same. It just looks like the journey is a little different for us right now. I don't think God leaves us in the dark. I don't think that he doesn't reveal things to us. He doesn't give us vision on how to navigate being recalculated. And I know that because it's what scripture says. Proverbs 29, 18 says this, where there is no vision, the people are unrestrained, but happy is he who keeps the law. When there's no vision, people have no restraint and they run wild, they're left alone and things just start going crazy. Have you been in a grocery store lately? But God, he doesn't leave us without vision. It says, hey, no, I'm actually giving you my words. I'm giving you myself. I'm gonna come close to you and just because Plans change, it doesn't mean the God who reveals himself is changing. God isn't done revealing who he is and what he cares about just because the plans have to be recalculated. But here's, here's our reality, HSM. I want us to know this. We can't see what God is doing if we aren't looking for him. We can't see where God is is leading us if we are not leaning in and asking the questions, hey God, what do you wanna do in this unique time? What would our lives look like if we actually sought after him? If we actually leaned into what he might be saying about who he is and what he is inviting us to do with him? What would life look like if we seek after what God is doing? What if we actually sought after and pursued the vision that he is giving? I know a group of people that have learned this time and time again. 
And I think you're familiar with this group of people because if you're like me, I read scripture all the time. I'm like, why have they not figured it out? And as I was reading this morning, I realized that it's in here so many times because we still haven't figured that out either. We still have to learn this exact lesson. So there's a specific story that I know you're familiar with in the book of Joshua. God gives Israel a vision. And that vision involved a different plan that I think that they would have developed for themselves. Yet, we see what happens when they put that aside, recalculate their pattern, and actually trust in the God who's giving them that vision. So if we looked at Joshua 6, just to give you some context, there's been a shift, a change in leadership. Moses has died and Joshua has an encounter with the Lord and he says, hey, everything that I've given to Moses, I'm giving to you. The plan now involves you. You are going to usher in Israel into the land that I've promised them. And Joshua says, bet, sounds like a good idea. Let's do it. And so we get to chapter six, and it's this incredible story that I, I'm sure you've heard before that involves them actually entering that land. And so the very first verses in chapter six, now the gates of Jericho were securely barred because of the Israelites. No one went out and no one came in. Sound familiar? Then the Lord said to Joshua, see, I have delivered Jericho into your hands along with its king and its fighting men. The first question that I want to ask us is, what has God actually said to you? What has God actually said to you? Because we see, what I see in Joshua's story is a God that comes close. I see a God that relates to his people. I see a God that's faithful to his promises. And he comes close to give them vision and says, hey, this is what I'm going to do for you. Your relationship with God is and always will be the most important relationship that you lean into. Your relationship is also your responsibility. And so I'm asking, hey, are you pursuing what God is actually saying to you in this time? God told Joshua that he was going to give him Jericho. But they were looking at a fortified city. He said, hey, this is what's going to happen. They come in and they said, there's all these walls. I'm not sure how these things are adding up. I'm not sure how these things are matching. And as I was reading that, I realized that I do that so many times. Like, hey, this is what God said is going to happen. And I'm like, well, not so sure. I realize that we can't just look at what is. We have to look at what God is also doing. Because when we look at what God is also doing, we see that he usually gives instruction connected to the vision that he's given. And without instruction, we dismiss vision and we dismiss the God who gave it. Without instruction, we set up our own plan and try and get after it. And usually that doesn't go too well either. What has God actually said to you? And as we keep reading, we have to realize this other question of what is God inviting us to do? What has God actually invited you to do? So let's keep reading. March around the city once with all the armed men. Do this for six days. Have seven priests carry trumpets of ram's horns in front of the ark. And on the seventh day, march around the city seven times with the priests blowing their trumpets. And when you hear them sound a long blast on the trumpets, have the whole army give a loud shout, then the wall of the city will collapse and the army will go up and everyone straight in. What has God actually invited you to do? These instructions to Israel were, you know, interesting to say the least. I don't know if they understood it completely. I don't know if they had questions. All I know is they heard God give a vision. They told them, God told them exactly how to achieve that vision. And they did it. They did it. Imagine walking around the building for six days. Walk, hey, I just want you to go walk around in a circle for six days. All right, God, we we out here. We're going to walk around. Just one time? That's what we're going to do? Okay, okay. We walked around again the next day. It's like, I think we could probably do more, God. I'm not. I just, uh, have a seat. Have a seat. All right. I'll do it. I'll do it. Woke up the next day. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Yeah, we just walking. That's what we're doing. Did that for six days. And on the seventh day, the seventh day, they kept walking. 
God said, hey, I want you to walk around that building seven times. Seven, seven times, okay, okay, we're going to do it. And I believe because they knew, like, hey, this is the last day. Their momentum was building. Their momentum was building. Their faith in each step, they said, yep, God's about to do something. He's going to do it. And so they kept walking, believing that God had given a vision and given instruction to achieve that vision. They were obedient until the end. And just take a guess at what happened when they were obedient. Take a guess. So they walked around the seventh time. If you continue reading the book of Joshua, they walked around, they stopped, and they had been quiet for six days. They blew the trumpets, they yelled, they screamed, and they literally watched the walls of Jericho fall down just from walking and praising God with these trumpets. When things switch up, it's in our best interest to run towards God not away from him. What is this change in plans and our reality actually going to do for you and your relationship with God? Because God gave us freedom a long time ago, if you think about this. He gave you the ability to recognize him, recognize his voice, recognize his vision when he sent his son and his son lived a perfect life, took the cross, died, and then ultimately resurrected, confirming the destination Confirming your freedom, saying, hey, you belong with me, and you always will. That is what I'm about. And so every, everything that I invite you to, every vision I give you, every ounce of instruction, it's all about you realizing that you belong with me. <laughs> I just want to be clear. I need to clarify because I've been talking about the walls of Jericho coming down. I don't think that God is inviting you to walk around the walls of your high school and just assume that it's time to come down. I don't think that the walls of your high school are in the way of your happiness and in the way of what God has for you. Please do not let me catch you marching around Foothill. Like, don't do it. But there are things in your life, around your life, that God might be saying, hey, yeah, it's time for those walls to come down. Walls of fear, walls of temptation, walls of anxiety, walls of addiction. Walls of gossip, walls of frustration. And God's saying, hey, no, now that we have time together, it's time for those walls to come down. The destination has not changed, but the journey, the path to it might have. And because of that, what I read in this text is that I know that if that path has changed, God is still going to be a part of it. God is still going to be a part of it. And all we want to do here at HSM is equip you to pay attention to his part in it. A lot of us have always said, like, yeah, I just don't really have time to do this. I'm just so busy. You know, that's crazy. You got all this time now. Answer your life group leader's text. Respond in the group chat. Actually ask for prayer. Better yet, open your Bible and actually read God's words. Listen to his voice. Pray. Spend some time with him because God has afforded you the time to do that. Just because we're not in this building does not mean that he has invited us to stop pursuing our relationships with one another or with him. So I pray that as you step back from this video and you read Joshua 6, you see the vision and the instruction that God is inviting us into as we've had to recalculate our, the patterns of our lives. I'm going to pray for you. So Heavenly Father, thank you for every student, parent that has watched this video, realizing that God, you are still faithful. God, you will always be faithful. And so I pray that as we have this new pattern of life, this new time to actually pursue you, that we wouldn't take it lightly and that we would lean in and seek your voice and have the courage to obey. We love you. We trust you. In your son's name, amen. See y'all soon.